Who owns your phone anyway? Most cell phones uh, are typically locked to your specific carrier. We've got Jack Capizza on the line from The Globe and Mail. Thanks for joining us, Jack. Uh, thank you. Well, I bring this topic up because uh, recently the, uh, the iPhone has been hacked down in the U.S. So uh, apparently this team hacked the phone and now it can be used on any network uh, that is down in the United States and Canada for that matter uh, without uh, being locked into AT&T. It brings up a very interesting issue, doesn't it? Uh, this all goes back to uh, the unintended consequences of tighter copyright laws. Uh, when you get an iPhone, or for that matter, any kind of cell phone, you give somebody money for it, right? Yep. Who owns it then? Technically, uh, you like, do, right? I'd like to think I do. Yeah, right. If it breaks, uh, do you think that you can send it back to the phone company and say, give me a new one? Well, you can't, right? But if you take a screwdriver to the back of it and open up and start playing around inside, suddenly you're violating their intellectual property. And this is the position that Apple has taken with their iPhone, which is, uh, has an exclusive deal with AT&T uh, in the States, a carrier much like Bell or Rogers or TELUS or Alliant. And uh, they're basically saying that you can't fiddle with your phone in such a way that you'll be able to sign up with somebody else. And this is an amazing incident right now because what happens is that we don't know exactly whether uh, Apple is going to sue anybody for cracking the iPhone. Uh, now, it's not an easy thing to do, so one cannot assume that every iPhone is as easily crackable, but there will be people who do it. Um, if, if they're wise, they won't start suing individuals for tinkering with their iPhones. But, it's, but it's it becomes a very interesting situation, doesn't it? it I, I think it does, but... You know, does Apple really care for that matter? Because these people still are buying the iPhones. Apple's getting all of their money. Uh, I think the loser in this particular situation might be AT&T. Yeah, I think that, well, what, but maybe AT&T will get together with, with Apple and, and, and finance a suit, you know. But I, I don't know what these, what these people think like. It's just that I've been watching the recording industry's lawyers at work over the past few years, and I wouldn't put them past anything uh, to attack individuals. Uh, it's all intellectual property, and, and the funny thing about intellectual property is that you have to defend it or you lose it. Now, the interesting thing is, of course, with cars, let's say, let's, let's do a, a parallel situation. You know, the car that you're driving, chances are, has a computer on it somewhere that governs um, ignition, gas flow, and so on and so forth. Almost every car has these computers on now. Now, if you, you could tear, tear that computer out of your computer, out of your car, replace it with something else. You can go inside the box, and the only thing that will happen if you go inside the box is that you'll uh, violate the warranty. But you buy a phone, and you open it up, and suddenly you're violating their intellectual property rights. And this, this just doesn't make any sense. But lawyers have looked at the, uh, uh, American lawyers have looked at the American copyright laws and said that Apple is probably well within its rights to sue anybody who tries to hack it. But you Fun, know, I, huh? I just want... I just wonder why the marketplace accepts this. I, I know over in Europe, there's, uh, uh, if it's not already legislated, um, phones over there have to be unlocked. They can't be locked to specific carriers. Oh, that's right, because, uh, well, th uh, their governments are not um, heavily influenced, let's put it that way, by the, uh, big American entertainment companies like they are here. I mean, Mickey Mouse is uh, behind the uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act in the United States. I mean, we're doing it all to protect these major industries. Uh, and, and, in, and in Europe, they don't have those major industries pushing for such laws, so therefore they can pass a law saying uh, you can't lock it. Uh, it has to be available for everybody. And uh, there's a Canadian fellow here called Russell McCormand, uh, a really a heroic figure uh, out of Ottawa. Uh, he's part of the free software uh, organization. And he's asked the question, like, does Apple have the right to lock you into a certain carrier? You bought the phone, it's yours. Why do you have to? Uh, let's say they, they strike a deal with, uh, with Rogers, uh, which is the most likely one because it is a GSM phone. Uh, and, and are they allowed to force you into uh, a deal with only one carrier? Anyhow, he's got oh. a petition online with an outfit called uh, uh, DigitalCanada.ca uh, or Digital Rights Canada, and, uh, and, and he's pushing for this very, very powerfully. Well, uh, I hope he gets somewhere because uh, it's uh, nice uh, for consumers not to have to be locked into uh, specific things. Jack, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Mike.
Jack Pizza from The Globe and Mail. You can check out more of his articles at globetechnology.com.